Everyone has their own style of briefing IFR approach plates. Any method should, at a minimum, ensure that every element of the plate gets touched on, because missing an important point could jeopardize safety. This gets tougher when you're faced with a less than common feature on an approach plate you may not have seen before, so let's examine a few of them to get familiar with it. The first is something you see often in mountainous areas like here in Montana. This ILS approach has a decision altitude listed as 5778 feet. When doing your initial brief, you check the weather, which is calling for a 6,000 foot ceiling, close to but still above the decision altitude. However, looking closer at the minimums, you see a second line for the ILS with higher mins at 6280. The first line has a hash mark next to it, indicating a note. The note is found in the missed approach. If you're using these minimums, you must be able to maintain a climb gradient of at least 365 feet through 8700 MSL. In our smaller aircraft with normally aspirated engines, this could be a struggle. If we can't make that gradient, but can still do the standard 200 feet per nautical mile, we can shoot the approach, but need to use the higher 6280 decision altitude. But alas, with ceilings at 6000, we wouldn't expect to break out and see the runway. It's only if we're able to make that greater climb performance and get above terrain that we would be safe to go down below the clouds. Non-standard climb gradients on the mist are an easy to miss aspect of some approaches. Next, we see a very rare instruction like on this LDA approach into Eagle County, Colorado to fly the last segment visually. This LDA approach incorporates vertical guidance from a glide slope. So we follow that down to the MDA of 8330 feet. Once there, we fly a chartered distance of 4.3 miles to the runway threshold. But the visibility requirement is only three miles. We might not be able to see the runway if we arrive at the beginning of the visual segment, which is a longer 4.3 miles. This is okay. As long as we have the required visibility, we can continue inbound on that 250 course until spotting the runway. The missed approach point is SIPCU, the 3.5 DME from the localizer. If you think about this, 3.5 miles from the localizer, which is situated on the far end of the runway, is roughly 3 miles from the runway threshold, accounting for conversions between nautical and statute miles. So if you're at 3.5 DME and don't see the runway, you don't have the required visibility to continue the approach and should go missed. This is an important briefing item because you don't want to get caught off guard by a fly visual segment where you're holding a course instead of following instrument guidance. Next, we're going to look at three different approaches at the same airport, Dare County near Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. First, on the RNAV to Runway 5, we see a small shaded wedge, which kind of looks like a cut-off glide slope feather symbol. This is called a stipple. It means that from the MDA to the threshold crossing height, the published descent angle, in this case 3 degrees, is clear of any obstacles that penetrate a 34 to 1 slope. This means that the same descent angle can be maintained from the MDA to the runway without worrying about obstacles. And looking at the airport 3D view, we can see why. The approach to runway 5 is right over open water. The approach to the opposite runway 2-3 doesn't have that stipple. This means that there are obstacles that penetrate the 34 to 1 slope. Looking at the 3D view, we see a few charted obstacles in the approach area this time. The approach plate does still show a vertical descent angle, 3 degrees, but the absence of a stipple means that those obstacles penetrate the slope. Finally, there's the approach to runway 17. There's no stipple here either, but there's also no published vertical descent angle. Instead, there's a note saying visual segment obstacles. Here's what the approach looks like, and you can see that any continuous descent angle used on the approach might conflict with some of these close-in obstacles. The note on the plate means that you may need to adjust your descent angle from the MDA to the runway when on the visual segment in order to negotiate those obstacles. A very important briefing item. The last point concerns missed approaches. Here's the ILS at Easton, Maryland. When briefing an approach that uses nav aids like this, we want to make sure we've got all the needed frequencies dialed in. Let's have a look at what those are. First, of course, we have the localizer frequency for the ILS, 109.35. This is all we need to shoot the approach. Now, looking at the missed approach procedure, we see that we need to intercept the 283 radial from the ATR VOR to the Orit intersection. So we need to dial in ATR on 112.6. The Orit intersection is the 31.6 DME from ATR, but if we don't have DME or a suitable GPS substitute, we'll need to use a cross radial from another VOR, ENO, 
which is on 111.4. It's easy to miss this third nav aid, but it's a crucial one if you're shooting the approach using just minimum equipment. So these are some examples of rare or hard to spot items on approach plates that once you know they're there, should be easier to catch. Keep training with us at Flight Insight with IFR Ground School and more at the link here and in the description.